Hi guys! So today I created this twisted, sick, mad hatter female version. I did her all crazy like she just went nuts and stuck pins all over her face, sewing needles, pins, got some little pins in my forehead. So on this tutorial I show you how to do all of that and I walk you through everything step by step that I did. Um, I even made this little hat myself. I just did a glue gun. This is like some random hat from the dollar store and I just glued like little threading things, whatever, onto it and a couple of buttons and like a feather. There's a sewing needle on there too. So. And I just kind of made her my own colors. I figure since the new movie is coming out next month, I'm going to do a whole makeup so uh, series on crazy, demented Alice in Wonderland creatures, people, characters, whatever. So, this is the first one, the Mad Hatter. I hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial. And uh, if you have any comments, anything else you want me to do, leave them down below. All the product details will be listed as well down below. So. I hope you guys enjoy. Thanks for watching. Alright, so I'm starting off this look by pushing my eyebrow hairs down and just doing a base kind of light purple color to go over with a black pencil. I'm just creating the basic shape of my eyebrows with the purple pencil and then I'll go over with um, just a plain black pencil uh, just to give it the shape and the arch that I want. Constantly push the hairs up with your eyebrow brush just to make sure that there's no gapping or spaces or anything. That way you can fill it in automatically with your pencil. Next, I'm taking the Anastasia Beverly Hills Dip Brow Pomade in granite, and I'm just using a little brush just to push all my hairs up to make sure they stay in place. Uh, continuously use your eyebrow brush and brush the hairs up as well, just to make sure that they're staying in the exact position you want them to stay in. Next, I'm taking my Too Faced Concealer, and I'm just cleaning up the underneath of my eyebrows. Today I'm using my new Morphe uh, 35C matte palette. It's all matte colors and it's super colorful so I thought it would be perfect for a Mad Hatter look. I'm taking this light turquoise color and using it as my transition color for my left eye. I'm doing two different colors on each eye um, so this light turquoise color is perfect for the blue. I'm just using a fluffy brush and lightly putting it on above my crease. Taking this darker periwinkle blue color, I'm going to go into my crease and on top of my lid with this one. Then I'm taking my first brush and blending the two colors together. I'm just packing some more color onto my lid so it's a little bit darker. Now I'm taking this light green lime color and I'm using it as my transition color for my other eye. Just place this color above your crease like we did on the other eye. Then I'm taking this darker green and an even darker green and placing it into my crease. I'll also be using the same two colors on top of my eyelid as well. We're not going for a super fancy look here. He is a little crazy. Oh, well, she is a little crazy. Um, so we don't need anything too fancy or perfect. 
Next, I'm taking the whitest color in this palette and just placing it underneath of my brows where I place the concealer at. This will just give a nice highlight for my eyebrows. Eyeliner time. I'm taking NYX's Matte Liquid Liner in Black and NYX's White Liquid Liner. I'm doing one eye um, black and I'm doing the other eye white. And then on the lower part of my eyeballs, I'll be doing opposite as well to just give for a kind of strange, trippy effect. At first, I'm just doing a small cat eye, but I'm going to be going larger later on. Taking NYX's Color Correcting Palette, I'm just placing green in areas where my face is a little red. Um, which is around my nose, usually my forehead, and then I'm taking the purple color, placing it on the highest points of my cheeks and around my mouth because my mouth tends to be a little yellow, and then I'm taking the orangish salmon color and placing it underneath my eyes for my bags. And then I'm going to powder it as well just to make sure it sets. I'm taking NYX's white eyeshadow base and their Stay Matte But Not Flat foundation. I'm going to be using this as my base color for my face. The Mad Hatter does have a white face, um, and I decided just to use the white eyeshadow base for my foundation, basically. I'm placing it all over the place, and then I'm just going to do a little bit of the Stay Matte Not Flat foundation and blend it all together with a stippling brush. I didn't want a super white face, but I did want it to be quite pale. And then make sure you powder all of it. The white eyeshadow base is a little liquidy, kind of greasy. So just... I'm using the white eyeshadow base again and NYX's Above and Beyond Concealer for my under eyes, my forehead, my cupid's bow, the tip of my nose, and my chin. And then I'm just going to blend it all out with a damp beauty blender. And definitely make sure you powder all of this so nothing creases or runs down your face. Next, I'm taking this pink color from the Morphe palette and I'm placing it underneath of my eyes. I'm going for a super exaggerated look here, um, so I'm bringing it very far down the bottom of my eye. Make it a little darker um, towards the top of the bottom of your eye, if that makes sense. Blend it all together a little bit. And then I'm taking um, this orange color for the right side of my eye. I'm doing the same thing that I did on the left side, but now I'm doing it for the other eye. Just blend it down a bit. Blend it together a little bit more. I'm then going to take a darker orange and place it closer to my waterline. I'm going to be taking a white eye pencil and I'm going to heat it up a little bit. This just helps um, pencils become a little bit creamier and easier to work with. Um, sometimes pencils don't show up to their true color. Um, so heating it up a bit will also make the color become more vibrant. I'm placing it on my waterline and I'm going down below my waterline quite a bit onto my lash line. I'm going to do the same thing on the other eye but now with a black pencil. Then I'm going to make my cat eye a bit more exaggerated. Taking the Urban Decay Electric Palette, I'm going to be using the lime green and the yellow color on the center of my eye, just to brighten it up a little bit. And then the orange and the pink color on the other eye as well. Then I'm going to finish my cat eye off by exaggerating it in the center. I started putting some small lashes on the bottom of my eyes. Basically, I just cut up a strip of lashes for four singular pieces. Um, I just wanted it to be a little strange looking, so that's why I cut it into smaller sections so I could work with it easier and place the lashes where I wanted them to go. 
Just put a little bit of glue on there and let it dry for about five to 10 seconds and then place it where you want them. I'm using black lash glue as well. Then I'm taking this purple color and I'm starting my contour. I'm starting with a lighter purple and dragging it down. I want to give him a very creepy, um, almost dead looking kind of effect. Um, and then I'm going in with a darker purple and blending that out quite a bit. I'm doing a very dramatic contour. I wanted her to look quite sleepy or sick. Um, if you do look at Tim Burton's Alice in Wonderland uh, Mad Hatter, he does look quite sick. He does have very hollow cheekbones, so this is definitely the effect we're going for. I took a hot pink and contoured my nose quite a bit. Then I'm also contouring my jawline with the same hot pink color. I'm trying to give a very sharp jawline, so make it quite dramatic. Next, I'm taking this pink um, lip liner pencil. It's from Ulta. It's an Ulta brand one, and I'm just basically sketching out where I want her bow ties to be and how I want her shirt to be. Um, as you can see, I did draw a little mouth on my mouth, but I decided to not do that in the end. Also, I created this kind of shirt with little ruffles, but I did change it up. So that's the good thing about sketching is you can change it up quite a bit before you actually start painting. And I'm using Mayron's Paradise Paints today as well to paint with and Max Studio Fix Plus to basically make the paints wet. I'm starting with a dark green color. It's going to give a good contrast on my bow tie. I'm then going to be going in with a lime green color from Wolf Face Art and FX Paints, and I'm going to be using the lime green for the ends of the bow, just blending it in with the dark green. Taking the dark green again, I am painting out the ends or the underneaths of the bow tie. Adding a little bit more dimension. Filling in the center of the bow tie. Then I'm going to take a dark green color from the Morphe palette and I'm going to start shading the bow tie a little bit. Then start outlining the bow tie a little bit with a black water paint. I'm using Mayron's Black Paradise Water Activated Paint to do so. And then I'm adding some little polka dots in the center of the bow tie just for some dimension. And then taking NYX's White Liquid Liner, I'm highlighting it a bit. Next I'm painting in my little shirt slash tuxedo suit kind of thing going on. I'm just using a black paint for it. At least on the collars. Then I'm using a um, Mayron's gray water activated paint for the body part and the sleeves of the suit shirt. I did have to do a couple of layers of the gray. It's kind of transparent, so sometimes that happens with water-activated paints, though. I brought it down my arms as well. Then I'm filling in more of the bow tie, the collar part of it that goes around my neck. I'm just doing a green color. Then I'm filling in my little bodice shirt orange. And then I'm doing the little ruffle parts on top yellow. I did two little buttons on the side there and I'm just painting them pink. And now I'm outlining everything in a very thin black line. Doing this will just help make sure everything pops out and basically gives you a guideline for where you want to shade at.
Now I'm doing some crazy hairs on my eyebrows. I'm just using a purple and a black paint mixed together. And I'm just bringing the hairs up in a wild fashion. Now I'm taking a red and a dark brown to basically start shading in my shirt and um, where my suit lays on my skin basically. This just helps give a shadow and makes it look more realistic. Um, for some areas you have to do other colors like the gray area you need to use a dark gray or a black to shade. And re-outlining everything in black after you shade just helps make things pop out quite a bit more. Shade your bow tie so it looks like it's sitting on top of your skin. Shade your shirt as well. Always start with a lighter color and then go back in with like a black or a darker brown. Now I'm just outlining the buttons and now I've started doing the needles and sewing pins sticking out of my face. I laid down a layer of latex first and then I placed the sewing needle on top of the latex, held it there, put more latex on top of the sewing needle and put some cotton on top and then layered it with more latex if that makes sense. I'm going to show you here in a second what I did exactly. Ooh la la. These are the sewing needles I use. They're all different sizes. Um, now I'm just going to take another one and kind of try to feel out where I want the placement of it to be at. And then like I said, lay down a layer of latex first. Then put the sewing needle there, hold it for a few seconds, and place some more latex on top of the sewing needle. That way it's sure to stay in place and not fall or move or anything. After you lay this layer down, you're going to put some cotton on top to give it that rugged kind of rotten feel. I want it to feel like these sewing needles have been in my skin for a while. Then place another layer of liquid latex right on top of the cotton. And then you need to let it dry for a few minutes. These are some cute little pins. I'm just going to make a little thing on my forehead with latex and cotton and stick the pins in it. The cotton just helps give for a raised skin look. Um, if you're sticking needles and pins in your face, your skin's going to get swollen and it's going to get raised, scabby, bloody, all that good yumminess. Put some cotton down, put some more latex over it, and then start sticking the needles in the cotton. Be very, very careful not to stick it into your skin. Feel it out a little bit. Make sure you place a big enough bump of cotton and latex to stick it in there. Be very careful. Once it's dried, I'm just going to take some more of this white eyeshadow base from NYX and I'm going to place it on top of the latex. The latex is skin colored so it doesn't match my white skin. And I'm just going to blend it in with my fingers and a brush on both um, little parts and um, boo-boos I made. Taking this grease paint collection to make some bruises, I'm using yellow first and I'm doing it on the outsides, places I, where I put my pens at. Then I'm taking a dark orange color and I'm going to place that a little bit closer to the actual areas of the needles. I'm using a Q-tip to apply all of this as well. Then the next color I'm going to take is a dark purple and I'm going to place that directly on the areas where the needles are at. Um, also I'm going to basically shade it around the yellow just to give for a more of a bruising effect. After I've placed all the colors, I'm going to take a clean cotton Q-tip and I'm going to blend them all together. Taking some scab blood by Bin Nye, I'm going to place this directly where the needle is coming out of the skin and into the skin. You can do a few little drips if you wanted to, but I wanted to leave it pretty clean looking. Now I'm just outlining my lips with a pink pencil. I'm going to do a very dark outline and then blend it in the center to make it lighter. And I'm going to use a blue water activated paint to create some weird veins like I'm sick or whatever, infected. Then I'm taking the Anastasia Beverly Hills Gleam That Gleam Kit and I'm just giving some highlight on my nose and my cheekbones. And then voila, there you are, a cute little mad hatter who's kind of creepy and scary. 
I hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial. I had a lot of fun making it, and keep, stay tuned for my whole series on this Alice in Wonderland makeup. Thanks for watching.